In a world full of zeros and ones, cell phones and computers, cars and planes that can drive themselves, and other technologies that seem to be able to even think for itself, it is important for us to make a distinction between the two primary domains of electronics, the digital domain, which we learned about in the course in Introduction to Digital Electronics, and the analog domain, which we'll explore and introduce in this course. In this introduction video, we will take a look through the lessons that will be taught in this course, the parts necessary for performing the experiments seen in every lesson, and go through what expectations you should have as a student. This introduction to analog electronics course consists of 10 lessons. First, we have this introduction lesson followed by three lessons covering AC versus DC electricity and different types of diodes. Next, we look at different types of active and passive filters in three lessons. And in the final three lessons, we will take a look at how to build amplifiers. Each lesson in this course will be broken up into four sections and follow the same pattern. First, the topic of the lesson will be introduced many times with a video or experiment example, and it will be briefly explained. Then, the theory of the lesson, including some math, will be introduced to show you how we can build models to predict electronic behavior. Third, we'll perform an experiment and get some hands-on experience so that we can really understand what is going on. And finally, the last part of each lesson will provide real-world examples of how the electronics seen in the lesson are used in everyday life and everyday electronics. As with all other Pyro EDU courses, we will do our best to stay away from the evil math that can encompass electrical engineering topics and stick with the raw theory and rules of thumb that allow anyone to start building and experimenting. No textbooks necessary. In order to go along with this introduction to analog electronics course, you will need some hardware parts. The main parts are a breadboard, jumper wire kit, and the analog electronics components kit. Let's take a moment and get a closer look at the components kit so that we can put a name to all of the different parts that we'll be using. In the components kit, we have two 9 volt battery connectors, a headphone audio jack breakout board, an audio cable, two NPN style transistors, four 741 series op amps, one LM386 audio amplifier, one LM348 quad op amp, three different inductors, five small signal switching diodes, one 5.1 volt Zener diode, five different types of resistors, and finally, five different types of capacitors. All of these parts were provided to us courtesy of Gadgetory.com, an online electronics store. If you can't buy parts online, don't worry. Your local electronics store will have 90% of the parts seen in this kit, and you will still be able to follow along, experiment, and learn about analog electronics. In addition to the parts kit, you will also need a modern desktop or laptop computer with headphone and microphone connections, a pair of headphones, some 9 volt batteries, and we also recommend that you get a digital multimeter for this course, but it is not required. As a student, by the end of this course, you should expect to have had a good overview of the different areas involved in analog electronics. And beyond that, 
you should expect to have experience understanding and building your own AC to DC inverters, audio amplifiers, and audio filters. But do keep your expectations in line with the fact that this is meant to be an introduction to the various analog electronics topics out there. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. So now, if you're ready to start your journey into the world of analog electronics, continue on to learn about AC and DC electricity and what it means for analog electronics.